On October 14th, 2025, Microsoft will no longer be providing technical support or security updates to Windows 10. This means that once the state hits, Windows 10 will be at a much higher risk and hackers will start targeting Windows 10 more and more and more. Then in a couple of years from now, apps like Steam will no longer be supported. Heck, we're already seeing that with the 32-bit version of Windows 10. Re it's really only a matter of time before you have to leave Windows 10 either way. But I have actually noticed something about this. And to explain it further, we need to take a look at Windows XP. Before the release of Windows XP, your Windows OS's of choice were Windows 98, Windows 2000, and this abomination. The goals for Microsoft with Windows XP was providing the user with a much easier, cleaner, and nicer looking experience. And the second biggest goal was to combine the positives of the Windows NT kernel and the Windows 9X kernel. Back in the 90s, you had Windows versions that used the 9X kernel, like Windows 95, 98, and ME. Then you had Windows versions that used the NT kernel, like Windows NT 4.0 and Windows 2000. The 9X kernel was great when it came came to plug and play, better compatibility with games, and the ability to run wi real mode DOS, like, like, how can you not love that, you know? However, it had the big con of instability, aka blue screens. Windows 9X was notorious when it came to the blue screens of death and just flat out freezing your computer. Windows ME was the worst example of this, I can tell you that much. NT was stable, so there were barely any crashes or blue screens. However, until Windows 2000, really, you had the con of most games just not working, period. No real mode DOS or plug and play. Windows 2000 was the first version of Windows where plug and play, rather the first NT version of Windows, where plug and play pretty much worked and almost all games could run on it just fine. Anything before that, you would be very lucky to get a game running. While Windows 2000 would be the first usable version of Windows NT, it was still marketed towards the business market. However, that was about to change. In 1999, Microsoft would work on a project known as Whistler. This is what would become Windows XP, which would release on October 25th, 2001. XP was released to critical and commercial success. People were noticing the increased performance, the better stability, the improved hardware support, and a much more intuitive interface. XP would go on to sell over 17 million copies in the first two months alone. Relatively, that's more than what Windows 95 would sell in that same time period. Windows XP was a massive success, though because of all of this attention, XP would be notorious for computer viruses. Windows XP would go on through not only the rest of the 2000s, but the early to mid 2010s as well. Sadly, Microsoft would end support for XP on April 8th, 2014, making it the longest lasting version of Windows ever. People were not only annoyed because now they have to update to a new version of Windows, but it's, you know, it's considered sentimental for those who grew up with XP, myself included. And it was even worse for the businesses because you know, their systems still used XP. So, you know, there were a few systems or businesses that did upgrade their systems early on, sure. Most of them would stay on XP till the very end of support. Then people found you could change a registry key in XP to where you can get security updates beyond 2014, tricking the server into thinking you were using Windows POS Ready 2009, which ended support on April 9th, 2019. So adding that, XP lasted almost two decades. It was an operating system like no other. You know, it changed our culture. The wallpapers, the sounds, Windows Movie Maker, everything about it changed how we view operating systems. They weren't just, you know, the same thing anymore. You know, versions of Windows starting with Windows XP had something that made them stand apart. XP was the first of its kind with its Luna theme and focused on the home user while also focusing on businesses. 
Vista, for instance, would focus on aero, gadgets, improved search function, better hardware support, etc, etc. Now, with all of that being said, what does this have to do with Microsoft ending support for Windows 10? What if I told you that Microsoft pulling something like this isn't new at all? They've done it for pretty much every single one of their operating systems. Starting with XP specifically, there has been a strange pattern where Microsoft would end support for an OS even though the market share for that said OS was plentiful. People, many people were still using it even after the EOL date. I like to dub it the Windows XP effect because I mean obviously that's where it started and well we're kind of seeing that now. Many people still use XP after its EOL. Even to this day people stu still use Windows XP which is insane. It's not, I mean it's not much sure but still the, it, the impact XP had can't be ignored here. I feel like Windows 10 is going to go through the same thing where, you know, Windows 10 that is still being used by a lot of people is just going to be taken off life support. Like, no, like, no, like, Microsoft doesn't even care, you know, because, again, this is Microsoft being the greedy f that they are. Because they want you to use Windows 11, that piece of sh Hey, uh, Microsoft, you might want to wait to end support until the market share is 5 to 10% at most. Not... 45%? Are you kidding, Microsoft? Oh wait, you can use it for another year! If you pay $30, why would I pay another $30 for an operating system I pay $200 for just to use it for one more year? Yeah, bullshit. Microsoft, you're not getting my money. Windows 11 sucks. It's such a buggy, resource-intensive hog of an operating system that, I mean, it's frankly not even worth using it. Seriously, if you have to activate Windows to move your taskbar buttons to the left, you know what they are doing, and you know it's a problem. Seriously, this is, this is such a scummy company. I don't understand how Microsoft is still so much on top here. I just... On top of the fact that now you need to have modern hardware for Windows 11, not because it uses too much resources for older hardware, but because of this this unnecessary bullshit TPM 2.0 requirement. I know you can get around this with registry keys, but you know what? Why should I have to do that in the first place? Why can't I just install the operating system? What is with all of these hurdles being placed on us. Like, this is insane. So, what can we do in situations like this? How can we get away from the wrath of Microsoft's change shackles? Well, you could just upgrade to Windows 11, but like I said, depending on the situation, you might as, you might as well get a new computer. Plus the fact I don't want to give Microsoft a single buck of my money, plus you know, Windows 11, why the f again, like, why the f would I be using it? Now, to tell you the truth, I did use Windows 11 for a little bit until very recently. I was just getting so tired of the broken bullshit, updates that break your OS, unnecessary telemetry, aka spying on you constantly, and just my resources being constantly being used up for all this dumb crap. So, no, I would not recommend Windows 11 to anybody. Another option you have is to use Mac OS. Now, Mac OS, from what I've heard, is way more stable and performs way better these days, especially with the hardware Apple has now with their Apple M4 chipsets. But that's the thing, you still need to buy not just new hardware, but hardware that Apple themselves have made. You can't just put it on your custom gaming rig. No, you need to buy Apple computers in order to even use it. Another problem you may have with macOS is the fact that macOS, just like Windows, is proprietary, which basically means only they themselves know and have access to the code. We don't even know what really is in the operating system. Is there a telemetry code that spies on you? You don't know that. Now, Windows, I know, spies on you because, well, it's that's pretty much been well known about for years at this point. Mac OS, we don't fully know. I do know that Apple focuses heavily on the privacy of their users, like with their smartphone division, but, I mean, is that really true? 
I really don't know. I mean, we can't verify it because we can't see the code. So, I mean, is Apple better than Windows? I mean, don't get me wrong, there are some great benefits to macOS, and I would much rather people use macOS over Windows. But just that cost of entry and the closed source walled garden aspect of it just... It just kind of rubs me the wrong way, you know? Now, the last option you have, which I know this might scare some people, but once they use it for a little while, it won't be so bad. Last option is Linux. Now, I know there are some misconceptions about Linux, like how Linux is the operating system itself, you know, like how Windows is Microsoft's operating system, or like how Linux is like a company, which you hear about a lot. None of this is true. Linux is basically a kernel that can run a bunch of open source operating systems. This means that anyone can not only see the code, but when issues with the code do show up or if there's any vulnerabilities, they're usually fixed in just hours because the code is made by the community. Unlike Windows where it can take days because there is a small team of people working on that code. No, in Linux, hundreds of thousands of people write code for the kernel and the many operating systems that are written with Linux. Because of this, Linux is far more secure than Windows ever will be. It's why servers use Linux instead of Windows Server, because Linux is just more robust. It's powerful. Another great thing about Linux is the customization. I'm not just talking about, you know, your colors or your wallpaper. No, you can customize your Linux distro to look like Windows. You can customize it to look like Mac. Or heck, you can make it look however you want. Like me, for instance, I use, you know, Garuda Linux with the XFCE desktop in environment, which I will get to that in a minute. But I changed the buttons at the bottom to make it feel more like Windows 7. Yes, I know that sounds pretty unlinuxy, but like you, you get what I'm trying to say. I can do what I want. I can customize it to my liking. You can add items to your taskbar. You can add a power button to turn off the computer quicker. And that's just scratching the surface. You can make it look however you want. So everybody's OS will be completely different. It'll be unique. Now, Linux has many desktop environments like XFCE, KDE, Cinnamon, GNOME, etc etc if you want my recommendation for someone who wants to get into linux i would start with linux mint with the cinnamon desktop environment because not only is it incredibly stable but it looks and feels just like windows without the bloat and the spyware now sure apps like photoshop won't work well with linux because wine which allows you to run windows apps well, it isn't perfect, but first of all, these apps are from these scummy ass companies. Adobe, for instance, wants you to pay $50 a month for not even to own the software, but just for the privilege to use their software. That's $600 a year, and a lot of people can't afford to pay that. But secondly, you can find open source alternatives to programs like Photoshop, like Photoshop with GIMP, or you can find even closed source alternatives in Linux, like DaVinci Resolve, instead of using Premiere Pro. Because honestly, I've been using DaVinci Resolve for months now, and I gotta tell you, I have never looked back at Premiere. You will have to adjust to a few quirks and li that Linux has, but like I said, once you learn the way of the penguin, you will not want to go back. Like seriously, I've been using Linux again and it's just, it's gotten so good that I'm not even going back to Windows. Linux is so good now that even with gaming, like with gaming, there's games that, you know, the games that run natively on Windows, those games that run natively on Windows run better now under Linux with the Proton layer, which is, it's a, it's, a, it's a compatibility layer Valve made, but using that has way better performance than vanilla Windows itself. Yeah, which is pretty embarrassing for Microsoft. It just shows you how terribly bloated and unoptimized Windows is. Really, the only games that are really hard to run are games with anti-cheat, but to be honest with you, almost all of those games with anti-cheat are just terrible anyway, so... 
hey, not a huge loss to me. And if you need to run Windows applications without Wine, you know, just to use virtual machine software like VirtualBox, you know, QEMU or VMware. So this way you can still use the few Windows applications that's, you know, that you might still need. And to install applications in Linux, you can either use the terminal or you can use the GUI package manager that comes with OSs like Linux Mint. This is not only more convenient since, since you don't have to use your web browser, but it's also way more secure since you're not installing from an exe file, which is a notorious file extension at this point since it's known for possibly containing spyware or malware or any of that dangerous stuff. Now, in a way, I will say it's sad that Windows 10 support is ending. I remember when Windows 10 came out back, I was still in high school. This was back in 2015. Heck, I remember when the beta for Windows 10 came out back in 2014. I guess it's more of a nostalgia thing, but Windows 10 really does have a lot of positives despite its negatives. You know, the return of the start menu, the bundled software, while I thought it was pointless, sure. People did say it was better than Windows 8.1, so hey, there's something going for it. I think Microsoft is ending support for this way too early. And with them charging $30, for another year just it's just it's greed at its finest like i would not pay that 30 dollars to stay on windows 10 for another year god fuck microsoft do considering there are way better options out there imagine if all of the businesses would use linux instead of windows could you imagine how much more secure these businesses would be the consumers would not only be more secure actually but they would also be way happier because when they customize their system, they don't have to worry about another version of Gruda Linux, for instance, and undoing their learning process of that operating system. You know, they'll have better stability. You know, Linux just has so much more going for it that they should, honestly, all these businesses, like everyone should just abandon Windows 11 at this point. I, this is getting ridiculous, especially with the recent attacks that have been going on. You know. It's like, why are these companies using Windows? Seriously. Windows has suffered with this ever since Windows XP, this whole XP effect. Each version of Windows was different, which sounds good, but that was also one of its big disadvantages, I would argue. Each new version of Windows would actually be new. The problem is you would have to learn something new and you'd have to readjust over and over and over over again. Linux, on the other hand, new versions are just that. They're just new version numbers. You know, nothing in the GUI's changed. The GUI is decided by you and you alone. Linux is all about what you want, not what Microsoft wants. And I think that's most important. If you guys like this video, make sure you give it a like. It would help a ton. And also, if you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing to the channel. Until next time, guys. Peace.